main thing that they're trying to do with the wave glider is to provide a platform in the middle of the ocean that has energy. We're all really excited to be releasing the SV3 now. We've actually been working on it for quite a long time, and the engineers at Liquid Robotics have been thinking about you know, how they would make their, their own new wave glider for years. So the way uh, wave gliders work, both the SV2 and the SV3, the primary uh, unique element is the conversion of wave motion into forward motion for the vehicle. What's new with the SV3 is that we now have, we still have that same system, same wave energy, same sensors, same navigation capabilities, but we've added an auxiliary thruster, and the auxiliary thruster can kick in to get you that extra bit of speed when you want it. Um, also to boost the speed when there's almost no waves. Sometimes you'll be in a condition where it's like a lake. Um, usually that doesn't last very long, but when it is like that, it's often very sunny. So what we can do is take advantage of the much larger, much more powerful, more efficient solar panels that we have now and use that with the auxiliary thruster to add um, uh, propulsion from solar power alone. To do that auxiliary thruster, we needed a much larger, more capable power system. The batteries that we had previously weren't going to be weren't going to be able to store enough energy really to power an auxiliary thruster. The cables that we had running down the umbilical were too small, so we've boosted all of that up and developed a, a new from all of our learning before. Uh, uh, we've architected a much more capable uh, power system that we're calling AMPS, the Adaptable Modular Power System. Um, that allows us to have scalable amounts of energy storage. We can have at the minimum one kilowatt hour of, of storage and we can scale that all the way up to uh, seven or eight uh, kilowatt hours of, of battery storage. Typically it'll be two or three, which is about three times what we have on the SV2. The amps will connect to a to our new solar panels, which are about 50% more efficient than um, previous generation technology. Um, and those solar panels um, provide about twice as much power as we've had uh, previously available. The AMPS system can also interface with other power sources and power higher power payloads. Um, so we've, we've really boosted up the power. It's also about using the power more efficiently. Um, so we now have visibility, um, the system has visibility to where almost every coulomb of electricity is, is, is going within the system. Um, uh, where it's going and, and, uh, um, and how it's coming in. And we've found ways to improve the efficiency at every level the way we charge the batteries, the way we power our payloads. And, and now we've also got Regulus, which is our new operating system for the vehicle. And that allows the vehicle to be smarter at every level. It can navigate more, more uh, effectively, and it can use power more effectively, use energy more effectively. So why have a sensor running if you're not actually using that data? Um, what you'd like to be able to do really is have wave gliders intelligently turn on sensors when it's interesting, increase their data sampling rate when it's interesting, and dial them down when it's not. There are a lot of different ways of collecting data about the ocean, and particularly about the surface of the ocean, um, from aerial or satellites, um, from uh, submarines, and from ships. Uh, the wave glider has a large and unique niche in that uh, pantheon of, of, of devices, in that it's mobile, it's cost-effective, it's at the surface, at the interface between the atmosphere and the ocean, where you can be a communication link and you can be gathering unique data sets. It's where there's a lot of energy that's handy for a vehicle because we need that energy. Um, but it can fill a really a unique role in being unmanned and persistent at the surface of the ocean. There really isn't anything that can do that and move around. So WaveGlider really has a unique place in a uh, growing range of, of, of devices and methods that people have available now for observing ocean and atmosphere phenomenon at the ocean.